So I ended the previous video with a question, what is the derivative of the exponential and logarithmic functions? Well, let's calculate those. So I'm going to start with the easiest, which is the natural exponential function y equals e to the x. So to calculate this one, I'll just use the definition of derivative. So y prime of x by definition is the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x divided by h. Now I can factor out a e to the x, I'll get limit as h goes to 0, e to the x times e to the h minus 1 over h. And now e to the x here has absolutely nothing to do with h, it's just a constant with respect to h, so I can pull it out of the limit. I get this expression here. And now you can notice that this is really just the derivative but evaluated at x equals to 0. So I can rewrite my expression here as e to the x times y prime at 0. But now here's the beauty. So remember how the exponential function was defined, a natural exponential function? So e to the x is such that the slope of the tangent line at x equals to 0 is exactly equal to 1. So what does it mean? Well, that means that the derivative of the exponential at x equals to 0 should be precisely 1. Right? So I can replace that in here, and the result is that d dx, the derivative of the natural exponential function, is just e to the x itself. So that's another way you can understand why the uh, exponential natural exponential function is so important. So e to the x is the only function which is such that the derivative of the function is the function itself. That's quite remarkable. And in fact, one thing you can notice as well here is that from the property that y prime at 0 is equal to 1, I get the following statement here, which is that the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h should be exactly equal to 1. That's also not obvious at all. And in fact, it can be taken as a definition of what the number e really is. And you could use that, in fact, to calculate the value of e. All right, so that was the easiest one, but from this one, we'll be able to calculate all the other derivatives. So now let's look at the exponential function for arbitrary base a. Well, what I'll do here to calculate it is use the following trick. So I can always write a as exponential of ln of a, because ln is just the inverse function of e to the x. All right, so now I can plug that in here, so I'll get that y is equal to e to the ln of a to the x, but then by property of exponential functions, I get that this is just e to the ln of a times x. Okay, that's great. And now I can calculate the derivative. So y prime of x here will be the derivative of this function. Now first I can use the chain rule. This is a composite function. I first take the derivative of the other function, which is the exponential function. I just get the exponential function again, times the derivative of the exponent, and then I get ln of a. But e to the ln of a, remember, is just a, so I get a to the x times ln of a. Awesome. So the result is that d dx of the arbitrary exponential function is just equal to a to the x again, but now times logarithm, natural logarithm of a. Cool. Okay, so now let's talk about the derivative of the logarithm functions. So first we'll work with the natural logarithm. How can I calculate this? Well, let's just use the inverse function property of the logarithm. So this is true if and only if x is equal to e to the y. That's by definition of the logarithm as the inverse function of the exponential function. Now what I'll do is just use implicit differentiation here to calculate the derivative. So what do I mean here? Well, I'll just start from this statement here and take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. So what will I get? Well, on the left-hand side, I just get 1. On the right-hand side, I get e to the y again, but then times y prime. Remember that I have to consider y as a function of x when I do implicit differentiation. So solving for y prime, I get that y prime is equal to 1 over e to the y, but e to the y is x, so I just get 1 over x. Awesome. So what I have found is that the derivative of the natural logarithm is only very simple, it's, on, it's exactly 1 over x. Cool, now what about the general logarithm in base a? Well, what I'm going to use now is the change of base formula that we proved in the previous video. 
what was this? Well, this was saying that the logarithm in base A is really just equal to the natural logarithm of X divided by the natural logarithm of A. So you see now I can use that directly to calculate the derivative. The derivative of the left-hand side, which is Y prime, will just be ln of A is just a constant. So I get 1 over ln of A times the derivative of ln of X, which is 1 over X. So in other words, the derivative of the logarithm in base a is equal to 1 over x times ln of a. Cool, so I found all four uh, derivatives. I can summarize that in the following slide. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. Fantastic, awesome function. Derivative of a to the x is a to the x times ln of a. Derivative of log of x, ln of x is 1 over x. And derivative of log of x in base a is 1 over x uh, times ln of a. Now I can turn this around as well. This is also a statement about antiderivatives. So in other words, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus integration constant. Antiderivative, antiderivative of a to the x is 1 over ln of a, a to the x plus an arbitrary constant. And now you would be tempted to write that as the inverse statement of this, but you have to be a little careful. The precise statement here should have an absolute value here for the general antiderivative of 1 over Okay, so why is this so? This is quite interesting. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes here explaining why should there be an absolute value here. So the state, the reason is the following. So let's let's see what this absolute value function here is. So this is just ln of x if x is positive, and ln of minus x if x is negative. So if I take the derivative here of this function, what will I get? Well, for the positive case, I'll just get 1 over x. For the negative case, I get my 1 over minus x, but times now the derivative of minus x by the chain rule. So this would be times minus 1. So you see that here the signs cancel, so the whole thing is really 1 over x everywhere, of course, except x equals to 0, where it's not defined. So the statement here is that ln of absolute value of x really is an antiderivative of 1 over x for all x not equal to 0. Now, if you didn't have the absolute value here, that would be true only for x being positive. So that's why the most general antiderivative must have the absolute value here. So the function ln of absolute value of x, so ln of x was something like that. And then of absolute value of x adds a branch on the negative side, which is just, that's a bad drawing, but it's just a reflection of this on the negative side. Okay, cool. So now just a fun fact to end this video. So if you remember from week six, we had a table of antiderivatives. We were studying power functions and then finding the antiderivatives. But there was a problem here. So if we took the function one over x, we had no idea what the antiderivative was. Well, we've just found out what the answer is. So what should be on this column here is ln of absolute value of x plus c. And now we can fill the gap and the table is complete.